Hi there, I'm Chris Klein, director of Butterfly Ridge Butterfly Conservation Center here in Southeast Ohio. And as we get towards the end of the season here, wanted to showcase one particular group of plants that is blooming strong and uh, one of the few really good nectar sources that are, that are left as far as butterflies are concerned. And we're gonna try to swing the camera around here. Hopefully you can see all these pretty white flowers here. Okay, it's kind of early in the morning, so you're probably not gonna see very many butterflies hanging out on them. But this is heath aster. And the heath aster is a native to our site. Um, almost to the point of being a weedy native but you know that's that's okay it does the job and it is a native so we don't care if it kind of comes in thick but the uh, the heath aster this time of year is an excellent nectar source for butterflies I've seen common buckeyes on it I've seen sulfurs I've seen monarchs all all taking advantage of the heath aster uh, scientific name I believe it used to be Air, aster ericoides but then you you know plant taxonomists they have to dink around with the name so i'm not entirely sure what it's called now so we'll just call it heath aster how about that and um wanted to walk down here a ways and show you another aster that we have up here in the prairie this one is not native to our site but it is native to the area and let me get a good angle with the sun here hopefully you can see that nice purple right there Okay, that is New England Aster. Um, and once again, another, another excellent nectar source for this late in the date, late in the season for butterflies. Um, the New England Aster, once again, like I said, it's not native to our site. We gathered some seed from a location about 10 miles north of here up in Fairfield County near Sugar Grove. That's where the original seed for our plants came from. And it's doing really well out here in the tall grass prairie. Um, having a little trouble competing with the tall grasses, but that's not the aster's fault. That's my fault for planting such a high concentration of tall grasses. So uh, hopefully you can learn from my mistakes and the tall grasses are great, but I would probably not plant them in quite the concentrations that I did. Um, but still, once again, the heath aster, excellent nectar plant for butterflies here late in the season. Uh, I would argue the asters are far better than, than the goldenrods, at least here on our site, that's how it's kind of panned out. Now, I'm going to turn off the camera here for a bit because I'm going to actually take you down into our wetland to show you the third and final aster species. And so hang in there. We'll be right back. Howdy. I'm back. Um, the next aster that I wanted to share, and I thought it was going to be the last one, but I, I maybe have changed my mind on that because we actually have a lot of different asters here at Butterfly Ridge. Um, the next aster I want to share is this pretty blue one right here. Hopefully you can get a good look at that. That is Swamp Aster. Uh, aster Punitious? I'll have to look up the scientific name on that one. It's been a while since I've used it. But um, once again, now the Swamp Aster is not native to our site but it is native to the area. So uh, the seed for the swamp aster we collected all from about three miles south of here down on Big Pine. And we were specifically looking, I guess it was two years ago, looking to add more flower nectar into our wetland here. And so we added four primary things. Number one is the cup plant, which is the this big tall scraggly stuff here that's been long out of bloom. Uh, we added cardinal flower, we added swamp milkweed, and we added the swamp aster. And uh, so far we think that was a, a very good quadrifecta to add down here into our wetland. Um, in our August butterfly count, I bet at least a third of the butterflies that we saw was actually 
and this stretch of trail that, that's you know roughly the next hundred feet or so of trail down here in the wetland so the objective was achieved with uh, adding a bunch of nectar um, I'm gonna try to uh, get myself out of the ditch here and we're gonna do a real brief walk I'm gonna go down here and try to find one more aster asters are kind of like milkweed there's pretty much an aster for every occasion so um, now I've been showcasing primarily the asters that are in the full sun. Um, there are, for example, right now if we took a walk through the woods on our wildflower trail, you would see the white woodland aster, um, which is a nice aster. It's not much as far as butterflies go, not, not because it's it's a bad plant but because of where it's located fairly deep in the woods where butterflies don't normally go so that's the story with it two other quick asters here and then i'll let you go okay the white one that is aster lanceolatus and the blue one here the really super pale blue that is aster prenanthoides um, as far as like common names for them, I'll have to look that up and hopefully I can flash it on the screen here. But um, but once again, for this time of year, the asters are about the best nectar plant that there is. They uh, far, far, far outperform our golden rods that we have. And so let me encourage you to, uh, to grow asters and we can help with that. We'll have plenty of seed that we can give away. And so if you're interested in any aster seed, let us know and we'll help set you up. And so for now, I will uh, bid you adieu. This is probably going to be one of our final uh, videos of the season now that we're starting to get towards uh, pretty late in the season for butterflies. It's starting to get kind of cold. I think it will take me a little bit of a break at some point. But uh, I'm sure we'll still have a couple more things to talk about. And so we'll see you later. Bye.